In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted this gas tank on this chopper here with all rattle cans. Look at that. Let me get the camera's focus here. Very, very smooth finish. Polished out. You can do you can do this with rattle cans, guys. You don't need a booth or professional equipment. It takes a little more elbow grease, but you can do this. Let me show you how. Okay, so this is where we're starting out with this video here. I have done some Bondo work to this tank, and that's kind of out of the scope of this video. And frankly, I'm not very good at Bondo. And this isn't completely perfect, but it's good enough because this tank had like a seam and I had to do a contour on the top. All kinds of surprises because it's a handmade tank. But anyways, I got, I'm using the uh, Rust-Oleum Filler Primer. This is, a, it's, like it says, high build formulation, fills in imperfections. This is really good stuff. Spray it with that. I spray it really thick. Um, you know, if your tank is smooth, like a fact, like a tank that comes on a Honda or something, a real factory-made tank, you're not gonna have any bondo work to do, unless, you know, unless it's damaged or something. But you can spray the primer pretty thin if you're, you know, you have that scenario. What I have here is a 3M sanding block with 120 grit. You could start at 80 grit because uh, you know the lower the grit the less prone it is to clogging but the 120 should be okay it might clog a little bit let's see another thing about this is these sanding blocks they're cool because they hold the sandpaper and everything but they do have a bump in the middle I don't know why they put that there I wish it was flat so you gotta kind of hold it at an angle a little bit So now I got my, this is, got my primer sprayed on here. I'm just trying to level it out a little bit. And you can see the sandpaper is clogging up, which isn't good. I could have started a lower grit, I guess. Just kind of smoothing out my primer. And this is a little different, so I'm still kind of trying to work in the contour a little bit. I actually had a couple little little dings that I was really trying to fill in with the primer actually that I, did, I didn't want to bust out any more Bondo. A couple little, they're almost gone by now. This is actually my second coat of primer I'm starting here. There are no hard and fast rules. Well, wow, this sandpaper clogs up. Huh? There are really no hard and fast rules for this. I'm just starting to level this out a little bit. And I'll take it up to like 180. If I had like 320 or something, I would do that. But it'll be okay because we can spray the color on top of this. And then level that out with like 800 wet sanded. So that's what we'll, what we'll do. Alright, so I'm going to freehand this with the 120. Now one thing about hand sand is... If you go this way, think about it, you're putting pressure down with your fingers and you actually put grooves in it. So if you're gonna hand sand, always go this direction. So you're not putting like grooves where your fingers are putting pressure. And don't even put that much pressure. Just let it let the sandpaper do the work. Alright, so I, I found some 180 grit sandpaper. Let's go over it with this. I would really like to take this up higher, but I just don't have any like 320, so screw it. We'll make it, make this work. You 
And you can see I went through the primer here in one spot. Apparently that was a high spot. And I'm fine with that, especially because the spray paint I'm using is supposed to have a primer in it. So I'm not worried about it at all. All right, so you use a like a microfiber cloth. Make sure you get all the dust off. I let this room kind of let the dust settle before I start spraying the color. You can see there's some spots I went through the primer. If you were using regular paint, uh, I'd probably put another little light coat of primer over this, but I'm using some spray paint that's supposed to have primer in it, so it should be fine. So the first thing I really need to do is paint the bottom of this tank. Now here's the spray paint I'm using. It's a Krylon Dull uh, Paint and Primer, and this is gloss black. The thing with using flat black, even though that when you clear flat black, obviously it turns into gloss black, there's something about it doesn't always look as deep, as dark of a black as the gloss does. So just to be safe, I do a gloss black. And um, other thing, you know, I'm probably gonna get criticized here. Oh, why aren't you plugging up this stuff? You know, why aren't you protecting the threads on this? Why didn't you cover the gas cap? Uh, I've done this before. You just rinse out the gas tank, run a fuel filter, and clean up these threads if they get paint on them. Clean up all this stuff. It'll be fine. Trust me. And the unfortunate part about this is I'm gonna get over spray on the, you know on the important part because nobody's gonna see the bottom of the tank. This is really just for protection, just to make it match, you know. But the overspray is gonna kind of hurt hurt me a little bit, but it'll be all right. I'm gonna try avoiding overspray by angling the can. See, that's what happens. Obviously, this is the bottom of the gas tank. Not too critical. Just trying to get a little paint on there so it doesn't rust. And one coat will definitely be enough. All right, that'll be good. So off camera, I kind of took my 180 grit and kind of just went over this a little bit where we got some overspray because it put a real heavy texture on there. I'm just gonna try to get rid of any dust that was remaining on here. And we're gonna be dealing with some texture regardless coming out of the spray gun, uh, the spray paint rattle can. And that's really the whole key here is we got to smooth that out through wet sanding. All right, so you don't want to put this on super heavy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a coat, pretty light, and we're gonna wait about 10 minutes. We're gonna come back and put another one on and keep doing that until we get it on here pretty thick. Now, unfortunately, you can see the marks coming through from uh, 
from the primer, the, te the, the scratch marks, we're going to have to wet sand that out. Now, my advice to you is really to go take this up to 300, 320 grit or something with the primer and get rid of the scratch marks. But I'm just going to show you that I can work with that and I'll be able to get those out. This paint dries relatively fast, so I can kind of just keep spraying. You know, the last thing I really want is like a run or something. That's what I'm trying to avoid. You know, honestly, you can really put this on as heavy as you want, as long as you're avoiding runs. Because we're going to be sanding this down. I know I said to spray it pretty thin, but just keep getting on here. It's actually better to get it all on here while it's kind of wet because you know if you if you put a ton of thin coats on and let it completely dry in between it's the paint's gonna peel right off you know you're gonna have bad adhesion so you want to keep applying more coats while the paint's kind of sticky all right so i let this tack up a little bit i'm gonna keep going with it because i'm gonna need to put this on pretty thick to get to get rid of these scratch marks and get this leveled out And if I had some 320, that would have been nice. Or even like 400 or something. I think I had some somewhere. These scratch marks are a lot more apparent than I thought they'd be. I'll get it taken care of the watch. We're not, we're absolutely not trying to get this to look glossy right now. That's, that is not the goal. A lot of people will think, you know, the way to get it to look glossy right out of the can is just to spray it on super heavy and then get runs and all kinds of orange peel. That is not the goal at all. That's not what we're trying to do. All right, so I know I said wait 10 minutes between coats, and that depends on how heavy you spray. If you spray it pretty heavy, yeah, wait 10 minutes. If you go pretty thin, you can wait three to five minutes and come back here. You're just trying to, this stuff dries pretty fast. Just want it to tack up so you don't get any runs. And you can start leaning, once you get comfortable with how it sprays, you can start leaning into it a little bit more and uh, start spraying a little thicker like I am. I'm gonna still treat this like primer, essentially. Unfortunately, I gotta wait longer for this to dry before I can start sanding it. But I have to treat this like primer still because I got those scratches to deal with. So that's why I'm just trying to get it on pretty thick. All right, so I pretty much emptied this whole can on here. Like, I don't know, eight coats of, uh, just waiting, uh, you know, three or five minutes between the coats, going, laying it on pretty heavy. See down here, you can see we got some real big orange peel going on. And that's perfectly fine. I got some stuff in the paint. Don't worry about that at this point. It doesn't even matter if you get some stuff in the paint. I'm going to show you how to deal with that. So the only real unfortunate part about this is I'm gonna let this set up before I can start wet sanding it or doing anything. That's gonna take, I mean, that's five hours at the minimum. I'm gonna wait at least eight to be safe with this stuff, especially how thick I put it on. So that's the only real bummer, you know, if you expect this to be a one day project, uh, it's not gonna work because this is, I mean, at the minimum from primer to having a finished polished paint job with uh rattle cans it's a at the minimum you're looking at three days and that's you know what just a wait time waiting for stuff to dry enough to work with it and you can see it's on so thick now that you know the scratches are just really become a part of the texture here 
we'll be able to smooth this out with wet sanding, no problem. And I'll probably start with a 400 grit. And try to get this even out and then we can spray another coat. So now my first color coat has set up. Uh, I actually let it dry for about a day, but I mean five to eight hours or so would be plenty enough for this type of paint. Now I'm going to color sand this, well wet sand it with 400 grit. Now see if I had taken my primer up to 400 or 320 or something and this laid flatter then I could be on 800 right now with the wet sand. But this is very aggressive when you're wet sanding with this and I, you can see all kinds of imperfections that I couldn't even see in the primer now. Uh, it's got that little gloss paint on it so hopefully I'm going to be able to get most of this out here through color sanding with this. And then the next step I'll see if I can go up to 800 after the next one. If not I'll do 400 again. I got a bottle of water, some 400 grit, wet dry sandpaper. This is why it's called wet sanding. Get my paper nice and wet. I try to be pretty aggressive with this. Now right now I'm thinking wish I would have did a better job with the primer. When you feel this, when you feel your wet sandpaper stick, give it a little bit more water because that means it's gonna cut real, real hard. So really I'm just gonna wet sand my brains out on this thing here. Let's see if I can't level this out enough. Yeah, your scenario, if you prep your primer better than I did, you won't have to have spray it as heavy of a coat on here. And you won't have to do as much wet sanding. So I kind of shot myself in the foot on that, on this scenario. And the thing, you know, the reason for wet sanding at this point, that besides dry sanding, is you know you're going to clog up your sandpaper real fast if you try to dry sand this. With this, this can go forever. With this piece here, wet. Might it grab pretty hard here because it's it's cutting pretty hard. Cool with me. I'm trying to remove a lot. Alright, so at this point I'm going to grab a rag, see where I'm at here. You can see I start to go through the color a little bit here. That's okay. This is only the first color coat. A couple more to go. At least one more. Probably two. Now the cool thing about wet sanding is it will show you exactly what the, your high spots and low spots are. If you can see here, the parts that are still glossy are your low spots because the sandpaper is not reaching there and hitting it. So this is telling me I got you know a rough patch right here. I'm gonna need to keep sanding. All right, so I kept wet sanded on this here. You can see I cut through the primer in a couple spots. That's okay. I need to level it out and I, some stuff show up in the paint that I didn't see in the primer. You know, when you get glossy black paint on here, you can really see some of this stuff. I'll probably actually be doing this again. Hopefully not through the down through the primer, but 
another color sand. Now I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it dry. I'm gonna do the do another coat right on top of the 400. Like I said, like I've been telling you, if you had prepped it better with the primer, didn't do a hack job with the primer like I just did, then you could have skipped to 800 grit already and been on been a little further ahead. Okay, so this is on my second coat here. I still have some imperfection I'm trying to get out. So I'm gonna go 400 again, and we'll go up to 800. Now, normally you would have dealt with all this stuff in the primer, and I use such a heavy grit sandpaper with the primer that I didn't really see these little imperfections, little couple little divots. Might be just living with one of them. But the process is the same. Alright, so I got it wet sanded down again. You see I went through the, to the primer again. This is not going quite the way it should be at all. I will let you know that right now. I should have really got the primer. You know, you see how the primer is smooth now. That's where I should have freaking had it. Um, I don't really know what I was thinking. I was like, ah, I can make it work. But I kind of shot myself in the foot on that. So when you're doing yours, make sure you take your primer up to 400 or so. Okay, so at this point I'm ready to take this up to 800 grit, finally. If you had prepped the primer better than I have, you would have been able to go straight to 800 probably right on your uh, first color coat. And I got it sanded down to 800 wet sanding. You can see I cut through to the primer again. That's okay. I'm trying to get it flattened out. I got a few little imperfections. I'm still working out. It's gonna be my third color coat. So my third can of paste spray or spray paint. Paste spray. <laughs> but uh, if 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 you had your primer straight, and you could have really did this with one can for sure, no problem. So no matter what, I'm still gonna have the same end result. This thing's gonna look badass. Now after you wet sand, I just dumped a whole nother bottle of water over it to get some of most of the debris off and then I 
just brush it off with my hand, any stuff that's left on it before you paint, let it dry. What I'm gonna do after this is, after this coat, I'm gonna wet sand with a thousand. And then after that, I'm gonna lay my final little, a little mist, a very, very light coat on top of that. And then my clear coat's gonna go on top of that. Now the thing is, is if you wet sand your color up to say, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred, and it'll look dull like this, you can actually clear coat right over that as long as you get most of the scratches out and it, it'll go it'll go straight back to the way you know it should look but I do like to spray a coat a thin coat before the primer even though it may not be perfectly flat we'll then flatten the clear coat on top of that now you can see this stuff starting to lay pretty flat now that our wet sand is getting pretty pretty flat Now you can start to see how fine the texture pattern is becoming. And that's actually, that's good. Now even though this doesn't look glossy, this is laying flatter. And that's, that's what we want. 